You know, brave and gutsy, guys, to me, is defined by those guys who are, like, fighting for us, like, half a globe away. They step on IEDs, uh, or, or horribly disfigured, die. That's brave. That's gutsy. This is not. When you say that your definition of brave and gutsy is ordering the appetizer and the main meal and the dessert and both of you splitting the bill and not really caring since someone else is paying for it, and that's your definition of gutsy, then sign me up for that particular fiscal diet because I'll take you to the next level. The reason why I think people are getting sick of this process is because it's a repeated process. And now it's locked in for two years. Two years of this asininity. Is there such a word? Well, I just made it. I can't believe this. Market on well off its highs. Uh, let's get the read from former Vice Chairman of NASDAQ, David. Well, we've got Prudential Chief Market Strategist, Quincy Crosby, and uh, D Digital Chairman, Dave Manning. Dave, that's my worry, that if this is deemed to be a tough call, then my gosh, what constitutes an easy one? Well, I mean, I it, couldn't agree with you more. So what happened? Sorry, I didn't know which Dave. No, I, to you, Dave Manning, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. This, this is what you're seeing is that it's the utter breakdown of the two party system. There's just nobody seems to have any sense of generational stewardship. It's just like, it, it, I mean, everything that Charlie and you both were saying could not be more accurate. The, the notion that you're going to tag my six kids with this astonishing kind of giveaway and, 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 you know, at a time when, you know, it's so clear that we have the resources and we have the economic strength to be able to pull in those spending reins a little bit is sickening. And, and, and there's got to be something that we've got to change in the Washington dynamic because this is not sustainable. All right, we'll keep a close eye on the 10-year note, too, that would normally back up on news like this, although maybe Treasury uh, traders are just as sort of resigned to this as as our equity traders. But Quincy, I'm looking at this and wondering, uh, I understand the, the, the impetus behind this, so let's get over this hump so we can deal with other issues, maybe address immigration down the road, address all this other stuff down the road. But we always do this. There's always another hump to get worried about, another hill to climb mm -hmm. so we can get to that. Right. And when we get to that point, Quincy, we don't address the underlying problems. We just keep pushing them back. Yeah, it's a process of one Band-Aid after another. And, you know, for the market, the market has done extremely well. But I do think that what has underpinned the market, Neil, is changing. And one of those changes is uh, that deficit, the funding, right. and that 10-year uh, yield. And I think the bond market, with or without central banks, because they're, they're pulling back. You don't notice them coming to the rescue right now. The bond market is going to be able to take over. And, and if there is more inflation because of all of this, yields are going to climb. That is the way markets work. And already, you're, you're seeing it happen. You saw it happen last week. So uh, this, is, this, is, this is where we are. And, and again, you've got the infrastructure spending coming out. If that is not a private-public partnership, the question becomes, who is going to pay for that uh, uh, something that's needed in the country, but the que uh, really the question always is about the market. And I do think again, yields are going to have to rise to attract money. Well, We're going to have to, a ten-year treasury. To your astute point, Quincy, that is exactly what's happening. A ten-year note, the latest quote I have, guys, yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong, is 2.82 percent. It's backed up six basis points. Uh, uh, so that has happened just since this accord was reached. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. I'm not saying the two are correlated here, but I don't see anything else uh, that could affect it here. But that backup seems to be real. Now, David Wilde, I'm looking at all of this and I'm just saying it's the market's way, presumably, of saying, um, look, uh, so you have no financial backbone. Uh, that's not a Fox alert. We, we've already knew that. Right. But I think when it dawns on them that more Treasury notes and bonds have to be issued to support all this extra spending, that could be in excess of a trillion dollars, they might be singing a different tune. What do you think? Well, I, I mean, clearly we're seeing, uh, you know, interest rates in shop, and that's a sign of inflation. Uh, we're uh, engaging in more deficit spending, which is going to inflate the economy even more. You know, when investors start to get negative marks on their portfolios of bonds, uh, you know, they're going to start pulling money out of these markets. Interest rates will go up even more. 
I mean, historically, you reserve deficit spending to pump prime in the depths of a recession, and also when you were concerned about deflation. And right now is the time that we should be, you know, paying down deficits and paying. Uh, and we're not doing it. We're not displaying any kind of fiscal restraint whatsoever. And to the point that you made at the, at the front of the show, uh, we are kicking the can down the road to our kids and not leaving them with anything. That's you know, the tragedy. I'm, I'm wondering if the market. Uh, today, which is well off its highs, I can only imagine this is among the catalysts for that or simply in fast market conditions, things can and will change very, very quickly. But David Maney, uh, I, I am wondering now uh, what the footing is like of this market as you see it after the crazy last few days we've had. What do you think? You know, Neil, it's hard to say in that I do believe in the underlying strength of the, of the American economy. Um, we, we've had, we have had really tremendous changes in that economy and the entrepreneurial spirit out here in places like Colorado and across the West is extremely strong. You do have this pro-business administration that's being very helpful to the psyche and everything else. But, but for, you know, for gosh sakes, I mean, at, at some point, it, it, it does seem that you need somebody who's a thinker, a financial thinker, not a, not a traditional, you know, Goldman banker as our Treasury Secretary, not a president who understands consumer psyche, but not really markets. Somebody's got to look and say, this could go very wrong in a hurry. And that's how it feels to me right now. All right, Quincy, now uh, interest rates have backed up. We're, we're looking at a 10-year note that's backed up a bit here, a two-year note that's backed up a bit here, a 30-year that's backed up a bit here. And not alarmingly so, but the S&P has turned negative. The market, which was looking for a while today and, uh, at a gain of in excess of 300 points, then 200 points, then 150 points, is now up about uh, 43 points. Again, fast market. I don't over analyze a second by second moves. I think the 4 p.m. close is good enough for me as a statement on the day. But what do you think of how the markets are going to digest all this? Well, I mean, it's clear. I mean, it was automatic. The yields started to, to move up. But also, I think we're in the, we are in the bottoming process. It's not a one-day event. And what we're going to be looking for, Neil, is the, is the close. Do we see buyers who were desperate to get out sell into that close? Or are we going to see buyers continuing to come in to the market? Uh, the, the volatility, the quickness of the market, as you've said, exacerbated by the algorithms moving very quickly, um, has, has basically, though, underpin what we knew was going to happen. This market needed to pull back. It couldn't keep going up every single day. And this is what it did. So this is a process. We think we're at the, toward the end of the process. We'll watch to see how, if money comes in towards the end of the day, if we see profound selling at the end of the day, it is obviously telling you that it is not washed out yet, and there are sellers there who have been waiting. But one thing for our listeners, your listeners, our retail investors, markets go up, but they also go down, and this is healthy. The big question for us now is, does the Fed come to the rescue? We hope not. It, the market needs to function the way markets work. And that is very important. It's a lesson we need to learn. 